Hey, how you doing? Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to talk about an affordable Aperture 120D alternative for the budget filmmaker, the Godox SL60W. Welcome to the channel. My name is Jake Sloan and I'm an Alaskan based videographer and photographer and this channel is all about helping you get the most out of your drone, your phone or your camera gear. So if you're interested in learning more about that or more about equipment that I use in my production company up here, then subscribe to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the, the Aperture 120D alternative, the Godox SL60W. Now, I have nothing against Aperture. I like their products. The light I'm using to do the hair rim light is an Aperture product, and the light that lights up that wall right there is an Aperture product. They are fantastic. So if you have $800 to spend on a light and another $200 to spend on a light dome, a light modifier, then I would say go ahead and buy the Aperture. But if you're looking for a budget alternative, the Godox SL60W might just be for you. But first off, disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by anybody. This light was not given to me or sent to me by any company. I bought this with my own money and I'm thus giving you my unbiased and free opinion because it's on the internet. It's free. You can take it for what you want. Uh, and here we go. Apparently a lot of people have complained about flickering. I have not had any issues until I hit shutter speeds above 500. Um, it's been fine for me. So shooting at 120 frames a second with a shutter speed of 250, I haven't had any issues. That being said, if you intend to buy this light, buy it from a reputable re retailer that will give you a good return policy in case you do get a faulty unit with flickering issues. The other thing that's out there that, that most people complain about is the fan noise in this unit. Um, there is a fan, you can hear it, but if you're placing this light four to five feet away from your subject and you're miking them with a decent microphone like a shotgun mic or any sort of microphone with a pickup pattern other than a lapel, which picks up everything, then uh, the fan is basically negligible. I'm in an extremely quiet room in my house and this fan puts out less noise than our furnace ductwork fan does when it kicks on. And so I've used it to light my last few videos and it hasn't been an issue. Um, I would have no issue using this for almost anything I do, except for maybe the most soft-spoken person that I've ever interviewed ever, which I haven't had a problem with. There is a modification you can do to replace the fan with this fan, which is dead quiet and keeps the light really, really cool. The problem with that is that as soon as you replace it with this fan, this light does flicker to the eye at anything less than 30%. Now, less than 30%, there's flicker. Uh, if you go down to 10%, it's absolutely driving you crazy, but it doesn't seem to show up when you're shooting, say at 24 frames a second with a shutter speed of 50. Um, that being said, the flickering was enough to drive me crazy enough to not use this fan and to leave the stock fan in and just leave it at that. The fan, I really don't find is that distracting. So let's start off with talking about some of the strong points of this light, which the first is price. You're gonna spend about $120 to $130, and then with a softbox or light modifier, you'll probably be right about $200 which is excellent considering you get a ton of light output, easily enough to fill a room, to light somebody really well, a subject for a key light, or to use it on a harsh similar like this for a backlight, uh, hair light, or anything like that. This light is fantastic. The quality of the light is really good. I tested it with a app called Light Spectrum Pro, which seems to be really accurate from my experience. Um, and it puts out right about 55 to 5600 Kelvin. So you should be able to use this to match daylight, no problem at all with your camera in a white balance. Another great thing about this light is that it plugs straight into the wall, which I guess could also be a downside if you need to go do some remote suiting with batteries, then you're gonna have to look somewhere else. But I personally like not having a giant power brick or power supply. Um, to have to attach to this light. It makes it small, compact, and very portable, being that you just need the light, your modifier, and a power cable. The other thing I really like about this light is the remote. There are some weird things about it. It's nice and useful for being able to dim, turn up, turn down, and turn on and off the light. Um, the other odd thing about that is that if this is not set to 5600 Kelvin, then you can only dim down to 25%. But as soon as you set this to 5600 Kelvin, you can dim all the way down to 10% and use full functionality. But I do like the fact that they included a remote. Considering the price, it's really, really fantastic. The other thing that's nice about it is it does have a Bowens mount. 
Um, so anything with a Bowens mount, you can attach to it really easily and really quickly. I use a big newer softbox with a Bowens mount. It pops on, pops off, no problem at all, and works really, really well. The biggest downside most people seem to have is the fan noise and or flickering issues. Unless you're really lighting somebody very close and using an omnidirectional mic like a lapel microphone, the fan noise in this light is not going to be louder than any just average noise in any average room that you're going to be in interviewing somebody. So the fan noise to me is not really that big a deal, but it is there and you need to be aware of it. The other issue that people have really had is the flickering issue, which to me, I haven't had an issue with it. I, there probably have been some faulty units out there, but uh, I don't notice any flickering until I hit shutter speeds of 500 and up. So I tried 500, I tried 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. All of those did show some flickering, but I only film at most 120 frames a second, which means a shutter speed of 250. And I did not get any flickering at that point because I'm also using the light at 100% then and and it's just not as much of an issue. Another downside is the remote. It's not bi-directional, and so any changes you make on the remote, if you've made any changes on the light itself, the remote instantly overrides any settings on the light. The only other downside that I have found is the construction quality of materials that they use, which overall is pretty good. This is metal, this is metal, these two parts here, and the clamp itself is actually plastic, although there is a metal ring in there for clamping it down on anything. And so what that means is you just have to be a little bit careful about how you handle the light if you're moving it around a lot. Now, if you're leaving it in a studio location, it won't be an issue at all. But if you're taking it on location a lot, you would just want to be able to put it in a bag and make sure that it's safe, you know, relatively relatively safe in how you handle it, not just throwing it in the back of a car and then throwing lots of stuff on top of it because that will inevitably damage the light itself. The battery powered version of this is a lot more expensive and you're just a few hundred dollars away at that point from being able to buy an Aperture 120D and I would just recommend you go that route. But if you don't need batteries, then it's really not that big of an issue. So who is this light for? Well, if you're a budget filmmaker like me, you're just getting started out on YouTube and you want to buy one really powerful light to give yourself a key light, but, but to be able to use for a lot of other production uses, lighting other people for interviews, lighting up an entire room, lighting through a window as a sun effect or something like that. This is a great light for you. This will put out tons of power and give you lots of versatility for 120 to 130 $30, um, provided you can do it without having to worry about the fan noise, which again, if you're using a decent microphone, won't be an issue and certainly won't be an issue in any environment with any sort of noise around it at all, because the fan will definitely be quieter than say traffic on a road outside of a room. And having said all that, if you want to see some of my other tech reviews, you can click or tap right here. If you want to see some of the stuff that I've done in Alaska, flying drones and stuff like that, you can click or tap right here, like, subscribe, comment, all the social things, all the YouTube things. If you have specific questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you again soon.